Glad to see all of you here this morning for this very special worship service today. We just have a very couple of brief, or just a couple of very brief announcements. There we go, um, to share with you. You will find these on the back of your bulletin, and I invite you to look there. There's more. There are more. There's more information there than what I'll share with you this morning. Uh, but today, this afternoon, from three to six, um, our um, our kids are invited to share in a time of caroling from three to six. Um, they'll meet here and they'll go around the community to um, share that with folks in our community who might not be able to get out of their homes or um, in long-term care facilities. And also tonight at six o'clock in our Wesley Chapel, we'll be holding our longest night service, which is a chance for us to gather together um, with those who might be dealing with difficult issues, grief, um, loss, other things that might um, be on their hearts um, for a time of contemplation and singing and prayer. It's a wonderful, meaningful worship service, uh, and you're all invited to be a part of that. And last, last announcement, our youth Christmas party will be this afternoon too, so um, if you're involved with that, hope that you'll be there too. So um, again, thank you for being here. We are here today um, to sing and worship and to pray together. Um, and in the spirit of that, in the spirit of contemplation, and celebration. I have been asked if you would um, hold your applause until the end of the service so that we might maintain that spirit. Um, and so with that in mind, we do come here to share in the love and grace and peace of Christ. So the peace of Christ be with you. Would you please stand and greet one another in Christ's love. If you will just stop right where you are, um, and we will begin our service uh, with a moment of prayer. So if you would pray with me. Gracious God, in our waiting, show us joy. And as we celebrate this morning, we contemplate, we worship. May your presence be clear to us, and may your joy and grace be seen in all we do and in the way we live as we leave here. In Christ's name we pray, and all God's people said, Amen. please be seated.
Today we light three candles, the candle of hope, the candle of peace, and the candle of joy. The light of this third candle reminds us that we have no reason to be fearful or anxious because God has sent us a savior. We should be glad in this affirmation of God's love for us and pledge to serve him faithfully with joy-filled hearts. Let us pray. Gracious God, remind us today and every day that we have good reason to be joyful and forgive us for focusing our minds on negative things. Because you sent your son into the world, we can truly celebrate this season of wonder. Fill our hearts with calm assurance so that we might be messengers of peace who joyfully spread your love wherever we go. Amen. May joy light the way. Let us unite our voices. Advent is marked by a spirit of joy and celebration. Advent is a time to open our eyes to many blessings. Advent is a time to appreciate the bonds of human love. Advent is a time to remember the promises of God.
please join in the opening proclamation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The light shines in the darkness.
Let us pray. Beloved in Christ, this Christmas season, it is our duty and delight to prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels and to go in heart and mind to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass and the babe lying in a manger. Therefore, let us hear again from the Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our sin until the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. And let us make this house of prayer glad with our carols of praise. But first, because this of all things would rejoice Jesus' heart, let us pray to him for the needs of the whole world and all his people. For peace upon the earth he came to save us, for love and unity within one church he did build, for goodwill among all peoples. And particularly at this time, let us remember the poor, the cold, the hungry, the oppressed, the sick and them that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, and all who know not the Lord Jesus or who love him not or who by sin have grieved his heart and love. Lastly, let us remember all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light. That multitude which no one can remember, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom, in this Lord Jesus, we forevermore are one. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words that Christ himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven. receive this blessing. As the people of God receive, the Almighty God bless us with divine grace, Christ give us the joys of everlasting life, and unto the fellowship of the citizens above, may the King of angels bring us all. Amen. Our first lesson comes from Genesis, the third chapter, verses 8 through 15 and 17 through 19. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman whom you gave to, to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent tricked me and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. And to the man he said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and eaten of the tree about which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. You are dust, and to dust you shall return.
The second lesson comes from Genesis 22, verses 15 through 18. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. Third lesson comes from the ninth chapter of Isaiah, verse, verses 2, 6, and 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, his authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
The fourth lesson comes from Isaiah 11, verses 1 through the first part of verse 4 and verses 6 through 9. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adler's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Our fifth lesson comes from the first chapter of Luke, verses 26 through 35 and 38. 
In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man uh, whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The ushers are invited to come forward at this time to receive our tithes and offerings. And will you pray with me? Accept these gifts, O God, that are given today in gratitude for the many blessings that we receive. May we ever be mindful of the gift that was given to us in the form of a baby in a manger. Amen.
The sixth lesson comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to, to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn.
seventh lesson continues in Luke. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger.
The eighth lesson comes from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men came from the east to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we have observed his star at its rising, and we have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is a shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they would offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh.
in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth.
Receive this blessing. May the Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with the sweetness of inward peace and goodwill. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>